Mm. All right, folks. Welcome to uh, Technical Thursday. Uh, so this is like the, the 8th September. And today's focus is uh, trees. So what we'll actually do is, uh, uh, is walk through some of the common tree-based questions. So the prep questions are actually very basic fundamental questions that you all should know. And if you don't know, that is something that is in all textbooks, it's in all interview sessions, it's just every, every place you could find, uh, find you would actually have that. So please make sure that you are, um, please make sure that, you are, um, that you're, you're aware of this. So let's go quickly uh, through the prep questions. We're going to spend like one or two minutes at most on each. Uh, uh, first question is, uh, what is a binary tree and how do you create one? Any takers? Any takers? Okay, it's a directed graph with no cycles, and it's connected. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. each node has up to two children, a left and a right. That is correct. So a binary tree does not always have to have two children. There are there would be scenarios where they have one children or none, especially when they're yeah. leaf nodes. So I said that, up to chi two children. Yeah. Perfect. So perfect. I'm just like clarifying that aspect of it because um, I know people when they say binary, oh binary tree has like, it's actually a tree with, with two children. Like every node has two children. That's not possible. You would have to have some leaf nodes for, for that to work. So anyway, so that is that. Uh, how would you traverse a binary tree? You have two different there, techniques. Uh, Go ahead, Trisha. Yeah, either breadth for, uh, breadth for search or uh, uh, breadth for traversal or uh, depth for traversal. All right. Uh, tell me what, what uh, breadth first traversal is and how would you do that at a very high level quickly without uh, going into too much detail, yeah, of course. Breadth um, you start with the root and uh, go along each level. Um, basically, you uh, set all the uh, children at one level and the children at the next level. Um, and depth first is like you uh, either you uh, go from the left uh, left subtree, then the root, then the right. I mean, there are three ways of traversing, like in order, pre order, post order. Um, it's a recursive way of doing uh, traversing the tree, whereas uh, depth first, I mean, breadth first is like you just enter all the nodes and uh, um, the children and start, uh, I mean, you traverse the uh, nodes uh, by each level. Okay, that's very good. Anybody else wants to add to that? Um, Sven, you could also say that depth first search is like you go deep first, hence the name, and then go wide just for simplicity's sake. Yeah, uh, the, main, the main difference I would say is a breadth first search uses a, a queue. Depth first search uses tag to store the previous nodes. Uh -huh. I mean, so the breadth first search is the reverse of what I said. It's you go wide first before you go deep. Sorry, I, yeah, I, I, I was, yeah. I, I didn't, I didn't spot that. Thanks for correcting. So yeah. breadth first search by the name actually is talking about you. You go wide, as in you are doing level order traversing. It's also called as level order traversing because you traverse the first level first, and then you traverse the second level, and then the third level, and so on. And uh, you you do that. And depth first search is essentially you start down a path and you explore all the way till you hit a leaf node, and then you sort of backtrack and then you continue. Uh, and and you just explore the pretty much the, the path in that particular form. The interesting thing here is that um, depth first search actually lends itself to recursion pretty easily, because you could just at every point you can just say uh, process all the child nodes at this point of time, and that works very well. Whereas um, uh, depth first search, whereas breadth first search, it's just much easier to have. You have to use a queue to to make it work. And uh, the fun thing is that the code for breadth first search and depth first search is actually identical. In one case, you just use a stack. In the other case, you use a queue. It's the exact same code, actually. All right, so um, when would you use uh, any of them? When would you use a breadth first uh, search or a breadth first traversal? And when would you use a depth first traversal? So 
So you do. I was just going to brief it. Use DFS um, if you want to visit every node in the graph or tree to be more accurate. Because no, no, that's. No. Can can you can you repeat that line? So you would use a depth first search if you want to visit every node. So basically, every leaf in the in the tree. But would you not visit every node in the in the tree using either breadth or depth first search? You will be visiting every node anyway. So why? No, why but if you so if you want to if you want to visit every node in the tree, you use DFS. Like you want to go through and list every node like and then array. Whereas BFS, you generally use that to find the shortest path. Okay. Any other takers? Let's say for uh, BFS, um, alphabetical ordering would probably be an application of BFS. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Uh, uh, can you repeat that? Alphabetical ordering of what? Like like a dictionary or something like that. So where you want you care about the alphabetical ordering or for that, we probably would use uh, DFS. Uh, no, I think the, the let's take a step back, right? So, breadth first search essentially what you're trying to do is that you're trying to uh, traverse it by levels or the order of levels. So, if you are if there is a possibility of you finding the answer closer towards or like you would be finding an answer first or up front and closer to the origin or to the root then you would use a breadth first search. So for example, as Ben mentioned, if you're trying to do a shortest distance uh, question or if you're trying to find the least distance or something like that, breadth first search is ideal in those cases. Like a depth first search will, will may give you wrong answers if there are multiple answers, right? You may actually end up visiting a farther node which is way away from the root first before you actually visit the, the node on the right. So that's why you use BFS versus DFS in that particular case. Whereas DFS in general is very easy to code in terms of in a recursive solution. And that's kind of one of the, like people like it a lot because of that reason. And it also is helpful when you're looking at, looking at, uh, at this as more of, <coughs> of, a, of a way of like either doing a, a path traversal or a maze traversal where you have to exhaustively cover everything both DFS and BFS work roughly the same way. DFS is just a lot easier to code. Now, very specific scenarios where DFS is actually exclusively used is for special data structures, which are trees, but are actually encoded in a specific way. For example, the next question, what is a binary search tree? It's Go where on. like you store um, the left uh, child is lesser than the root and right child is greater than the root. Okay, what about uh, children of those those nodes? What is what are the values in relation to the root? So on the left side, everything would be uh, lesser than the root. The right side should be greater than the root. Okay, so if I have a left grandchild, what will that be on the on the left of the child or will it be on the right of the child? How do I know that? Well, I'm missing it. So I, if my root is eight, okay. all right, and I have a grandchild which is three, will it be? Will it? And I have a, a left child as well. So looking at, let's go the ether path, right? Let's do that. So if I have eight here and I have a, a left child, I'm going to call it X at this point of time, and I have the number one, would the one be here or would it be here? How would I know that? Um, the one would, if one is lesser than the X, then it would be on the left side. We didn't mention that in our previous, in the conversation so far, right? So. A binary search tree. I mean, we shall we, we can be easy with the definition, right? In a binary search tree, uh, every node is the property of every node is that all its left 
all its left children, grandchildren, great grandchildren, whatever else is actually less than that particular node value, and all the right children, grandchildren, great grandchildren are greater. What if they're equal? They all, if it's less than or equal to than n, then they all go to the left. If they're greater, then they all go to the right. You can keep it either way, but as long as you keep the definition consistent, you're good. So yeah. I have seen binary search tree implementations where the equals goes on the right, and I've seen, I've seen binary search tree implementations where the equal goes on the left. It, right? So the it depends one of the what, proper yeah, it depends it depend on how on, you want to define it. Yeah, I mean, doesn't it depend on what how you're traversing, how the traversal set up, whether it's in order post or post. No, it, this is the, it, this is not dependent on the traversal at all. It's just a matter of setup. So when I have a number that I want to insert, then the, what are you planning to do, right? I am I have a number. I check with the root, and uh, I I see if this number is less than or greater than this number. If it's less than the number, I try to insert it on the left side of the tree. If it's greater than this number, I try to insert it on the right side of the tree. Now, if it's equal, what do you do? You can either choose to insert on the left side or the right side. As long as you're consistently using the same side, you're good to go. So you have to decide how you want to handle your uh, the equals case in a binary search tree, and you're good to go. Okay. okay. Right. Somebody has some, something to say. Go ahead. Any questions? Nope. All right. So moving on to the next uh, one is uh, how uh, this is like we just talked about the, the portion of how would you insert, delete, and search. I'm going to skip that. Uh, and <laughs> fifth question is how do you find if a tree is balanced or not? What do you mean by a balanced tree? It should have uh, uh, two consistency, like two kids, two children for each name. Mm -hmm. The left height minus the right height should be one, right? The difference between the left height and right height should be one. At Absolutely. most one. At most one. At yeah. most one. At most one, right? That's what. Right. So, uh, so the thing is that uh, a balanced tree is not what is very intuitive to all of us. The way we think of balanced is where we say that the if you look at a, a binary tree and the left side has like say 500 different nodes at various levels and the right side has 500 different nodes at various levels, as long as it's like one off in terms of total number of nodes, we would think of it as balanced or unbalanced, but that's not what is the normal definition. The normal definition is like a height balanced is essentially based on heights. So as long as the, the depth of the left tree and the right tree do not vary by more than one. So if the depth of left is equal to depth of right, or if they just differ by one at most, then it's considered a balanced tree. Now that has to be applicable at every level, right? So you could mm -hmm. be you could be left with a scenario where uh, where your left side is actually pretty big because every step of the way your left side was like one more in terms of depth, or and it it just still is considered balanced. So so think of it that way. But, but that's one. Now the sixth question is how would you balance an unbalanced binary search tree. Can a, ba can a binary search tree be unbalanced? Yeah, when you yes. insert or delete. What do you mean by that? Is that like if you delete one element? I don't I mean, if you, if you have a balance, if you start with a balanced tree and, and you start inserting or deleting, you can't go unbalanced and you have to do the rotations in order to make it balanced. It depends on which route that you're choosing. If you're choosing a route which is like towards the farthest end of the listening order, and you would end up with an unbalanced tree. It's a binary search tree, right? So there's only one place where a, where an element can go. So let, let's say you have like a series like zero to ten, and if you choose like your root as eight or nine, that you would end up with a unbalanced tree. Right? Okay. So the way binary search trees work is that you keep inserting elements one by one to it. So if you, if I start with a root node of eight and then I start uh, inserting different elements, obviously my left side will have numbers from one to seven, right side will have the elements nine and 10, and it'll end up being un unbalanced. So how would I balance this binary search tree? That particular one, right rotation. 
you have to choose a new route and you have to um, push your route, current route to the right side and try to get food from the left side and move up. So usually you will you will have to start with the median or something which will become your route. Okay. And then you have to do rotations in order I mean in order to get it balanced. Okay. That's 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 one of the of the ways of, of doing it. There are different techniques and different algorithms and there are different algorithms that have their own advantages and uh, and scenarios under which they're applicable. Okay. So so that that's good. So just moving on. So let's jump into the warm up question for, for the day, right? So if I give you a binary search tree uh, how would you modify the find method so that it returns the closest element in the BST? So uh, normally the find method will give you an exact match and it will return not found if the element is not there. Instead, I want to return the closest element. How would I go about doing that? When you say closest, okay, so is, like, uh, is it a predecessor or successor? Either, mm -hmm. whichever is closer. Okay. So if I ask, if I am asking for five, Okay. You would return either 6 or 4. If both of them are present, you could return either 6 or 4. I don't care. But if 4 and 7 were present, then I want you to deterministically return 4 because 4 is closer to 5 than 7. Okay. Right? Well, basically, you're doing your find search. And so basically, if it's less than the node you're looking at, you're going to go left. And if you find that left is null, then you would take the value of the node itself. That would be the closest. I, I didn't follow. Can you re re rephrase? Okay. So usually, when you're finding something, you're doing um, you're doing an in-order traversal. So mm -hmm. basically, you're saying, look at the value of my node and the you're item finding, I've got. When you're finding, you're not doing an in-order traversal. The in-order traversal would actually be an oh, order sorry. and operation. So just yeah. to be clear, no. it's not an in-order traversal. No. It's like an inner traversal, but go on. Okay, so basically first you start at the root, you look at the root. If your item is if the item that you're looking for is less than your root, you go left. If it's greater, you go right. Greater than or equal, you go right. Okay? Mm -hmm. So basically you keep greater doing this recursive. If it's greater than or equal, you don't go right. If it's equal, you're done. Oh well, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you found. Anyways, uh, so let's say we're going left and so again, you look at the next node down, you say, okay, is my item less than that, that child or greater than? At a certain point, so, I if think you don't find the, you find the exact... Let, let, let Pamela complete and then I'll get back to you, Vish. Yeah. Yes, at a certain point, if you don't find the item, you're going to hit a left side or a right side, depending, that's null. At that point, then you'd return that particular node's value as being the closest. That is not what well, that won't be the right answer, right? Is it always the right answer? Not sure. Okay. So can we uh, so try to try to a few examples? Vishwa, go ahead. Yeah. So basically, you you when you search for the node, it's going to be a search miss that is given, right? Uh, it's not given. It, you may find the answer. Oh, you may find it. If you find it, that is the node, right? Correct. If it is, if you don't find it, it's going to be a search miss. So you will hit up. You will be at a parent node, <coughs> right? Mm -hmm. So now you have to find the parent successor and the parent predecessor. No, no, right? no, no. If if there are children, then you still haven't found the problem. You haven't. You it may be one of the children. The answer yes, yes. may be one of the children. So if you will. The only reason where you will actually end up with a miss, right, mm -hmm. is when you actually are at a node which is actually missing either the left child or the right child or both, and your value that you're trying to locate is actually either less or greater, depending on which child is missing. So you Only then is a miss. You basically have to, to tweak the termination condition. Uh, earlier it used to be like if the value equal to the no value, then you terminate, right? So it's so, a hit. And um, here you just have to, if you don't find, let's say uh, you are at a node where the value is lesser than the value that you are searching for and so, ps can you can you write down can you write down the uh, on etherpad 
can you write the actual logic for a regular binary search? Uh, find. Okay, so you look for, mm -hmm. start with a root node. Mm -hmm. Not meanwhile others, you should be, less. for the rest of the folks, you should Go be trying less. to try this problem down on a piece of paper. Come up with your own algorithm. Right. Else. I did already. And do you think your algorithm works, Pamela? Fairly sure. So okay. you have to repeat give it a, give it a minute. until either you find the value or you traversed uh, So don't don't mind me saying this, but this particular algorithm the way you've written will not work because if I'm okay. supposed to repeat by starting with the root node every time, that will not work. No, I didn't say I didn't say the root node every time. No, no, no not here. The one, the one I'm writing, actually, this is the one I'm writing. No, so I, I, I no. look at, okay. look at 18 line 19. So I, you still value is equal to the root. And then if you mm -hmm. loop, mm -hmm. look, at, look at current node and then look at current node and if it goes less then go left else go right but here uh, what you do right now is let's say uh, I, I, I can't like I can't think of writing it as a pseudocode but uh, again write as an example um, mm -hmm. let's say you have like eight here and we have uh, uh, six and you have five Okay. And you're looking for uh, four. Mm -hmm. So you start with eight, and it's lesser than eight, so you just go to six. So it's lesser than six, and you go to five, and you hit the bottom, and there's something, there's no more. So typically you would terminate now, saying that it's a mess, mm -hmm. but now you just well, find the difference between you're four trying and to five. What were you trying to find? You're trying to find the difference between the current, uh, the current node. No, what was the what was the number that you're trying to look look for? Uh, you're looking for four. You're looking for four, and you didn't find it. But that's you're using a trivial case, right? So let's 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 go the let's do the case that I just talked about, which is you have a seven, and you have a, a five, and I'm I'm trying to look look for six. Okay. Okay. So what do you think will happen? Go. Oh, so here, um, then you have to store for, um, like, what is the difference between the current node and the previous node? The difference at each level. Mm -hmm. And once you, um, you have to terminate when you hit the difference greater than the previous difference. Then the one that with the previous the, the previous node with the difference is the answer. That's the closest node. It can be zero. So Okay. Am I making sense? I, 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 what do you mean it can be zero? Um the, the difference can be zero, right? So it, it goes okay. to 8, and it finds that the difference is 2. Mm -hmm. So it stores like the previous node difference is 2. The, the difference value is 2. And uh, it goes to 7. And so the can, can, I, can, I, can, I, can I do something else just for giggles, right? I want to call this, this is 2, okay? And this is, okay, so 6. Okay, that's fine. That's okay. So it, it's never going to get to a point because 8 will give you the best value anyways, okay? So you're going to store as a difference with every parent, essentially. Yeah. No, so it, you want it, your space you complex. Have, you what is your space complex? Only the current difference, right? Um, oh. Sirisha, wait for a second. I, I think Pamela, is, we, have, we, we need to talk about PS a solution first, and then Pamela's solution, and then it'll come to you. Just, do you have a question or... About this, or do you have a solution? Yeah, I have a question. 
so why do we no. need to look for the difference why don't we just you know traverse uh, till the to the left sub tree till we find a value um, where it so, has exceeded and so then uh, done, right at this point you have found that five, you, have, you have found that 6 is not there correct yeah okay so which which value did you return i'm just going to call it 9 instead of 8 it doesn't make any fundamental difference but tell me what value will you return will you return the 7 so, or the 5 no what i'm saying is uh, 9 is greater than 6 so i correct. go to 7 Okay. 7 is greater than 6 then 5 is also uh, greater than 6 but 5 has no 5 no... is, is less than 6 yeah 5 is less than 6 so, so i so i just to then i looked then i looked to the uh, right yeah there is no 6 here so you return 5 correct yeah or we can uh, been, look to the parent 4 had this been a 4 would you return 7 or would you return 4 Mm. Right. If it's five, right? Five is only one off. That's fine. If you, if your algorithm is returning five, I can switch this algorithm to say four, and now your algorithm will still return four, which is not true. The correct answer is seven, right? If nine, seven, four, the correct answer is that. Okay. So basically, we we should go to the right subtree of four, and then uh, compare the uh, rightmost value with the with 7 and see uh, whichever returns the least difference should be the answer basically the rightmost child of left subtree uh the difference of that with the with the parent uh huh so how many uh, what is your storage requirement for this solution i just don't store every difference value with a node i just store the current difference um and just compare the current difference with the next node that i'm parsing so i have to s- somehow send this to the recursion uh, recursive function the difference also i don't need That's to fair. store previous values fair enough it is the same it, your, your algorithm is actually it's 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 the same method so if you look at lines 30 through 35 right that is like a typical uh, find method so you if you are asked to find an item in a tree and if the tree is null then nothing not found simple right and yeah. if uh, the tree the va- the tree's value current value is actually the item itself then you found, found it. it and if it's if the tree's value is less than the item then you your right i think i missed uh, greater than less than thing right if the tree's value is actually the value at the at the current node is actually more than the item then that that means that the item could possibly exist on the left tree correct yeah okay and that's this is the and then otherwise it's a left item so does that make sense for the regular search any questions on the on a on a regular search yep okay so Okay, so the closest number that's bigger and the closest number that's smaller is, so if I, if I'm passed for somehow I'm passed like the bigger number and the smaller number, right? So when I try to do this, when I when I'm trying to go here, the tree dot since I know that it's in the right sub tree, my tree dot value. not match min of and that's about it right and on this side it will be the same thing so that's all all I'm doing every time you go left you just have to pass the value and every time you go right you just pass the value along along with it And so what what is the smaller friend that's the that's the number that is actually the closest to the number you're looking for among the number that you have seen so far and the bigger friend is 
is a number that is larger than the value amongst the values. So bigger is the next greatest number, smallest is the next smallest number. And how will you call it? Is this is you will call it as item, comma tree, comma like max int, comma millint or something like that. And that's how you call it. Okay. And here, when you say boohoo not found. Uh, you you compare which is closer essentially okay so how this works is like this right so same tree that example that you have uh, so you go with nine and you're looking for six so that means it's this it's the 35 this scenario right correct mm -hmm. so what is the bigger friend Nine. That's the bigger friend is nine, and this is minint. Correct? That's what you'll pass yeah. to the subsequent recursion step. And when you go inside, there it's, you're looking at seven, and again, the nine will be replaced by seven because you just went this way. Had you gone the other way, you would just be replacing the min value with that. So that's how you would know that, uh, like for example, if the four had been here and six had been here, right? Had it been uh, this scenario, right? So what you would end up doing is um, uh, is is that you will in in nine greater than six, so that becomes you store that, and then the next time around you will actually have the four here, and then the next time around you actually you come to the point where it's not found, and you would have the bigger and the smaller friends at that point of time which is 9 and 4, or in this case, actually, you would have figured out the 7 as well, right? Because that's how you figure out the null. So it will be 7 and 4 would be the, the friends at that point of time. And you can subtract, you can just compare between the two and check. So all you've done is you've just passed along the, every time you go left, you've passed, you've taken the number. Every time you've gone right, you've taken the number. So, so where, where will you... Um, one question. I'll say the difference between the that, that bigger friend, smaller friend, and say that one more time. P.S. So, where, where do you um, where do you figure out the difference between bigger friend and smaller friend, and identify which is the closest? Right at that particular point. Once you have determined that you have not found the value, you know the value, you know the item, you know the bigger friend, and you know the smaller friend, right? So you can actually figure out which is closer. Gaurav, you're pretty noisy, so that's why I'm actually muting you here. So if you can go on mute yourself, I don't have to mute you. All right, uh, go ahead. One clarification. Yes, another question. Uh, so if I have the number set four and six, if I'm searching for five, which one do you call as a closest one? Do you call four as closest one or six as the closest one? Well, no. I, either is fine. You can, I, I, in that case, either is fine. So if you have one, like if you have five and six, then uh, if you have like both four and six, you can return either, that's fine. So you'll probably prefer one over the other. Just you look for so the smaller friend first, and then if not, then you look for the bigger friend. So in that case, uh, whatever condition we have, right? Even if we found something, the value is greater than the item, even we can, uh, instead of searching on the left, even we can search for the right side as well, right? No, no every value on the right will actually be more, right? Of course, it's more. Uh, and what, what, what is your point? Let me just quickly think of such a scenario. It's like, if even if we found something, okay. If you're searching for five, if we reached a uh, certain If you're searching six, for five, the all the elements six, to the right of okay, nine okay. cannot be the yeah, answer, yeah. right? Because yeah, the yes, nine yes. is smaller than those, so that's fine. Yes. All right. So, so that's that's this uh, example. So, so so far so good. So, Pamela, I'm going to skip your answer. Uh, I'm that's assuming fine. it's not fund fundamentally different from what we have. Uh, let's do the next one. This one's interesting. We have done this question multiple times in different forms. Uh, given a binary search tree. Can you find two numbers that uh, add up to a given target? Sorry. 
so there are multiple ways to solve this so mm-hmm. one way is like uh, we find we we get a, a value and search for its complement in the tree similarly mm-hmm. we will search if we find something in the tree then we say that's a pair so the complexity will be n square because we are searching each and every time are we allowed additional storage or not <laughs> take it so other way is like uh, it's we can yeah at each and every node we can keep in a hash map and at each it's like each at each and every node we can keep what we are searching for in the hash map and if we find something it's like at the root if we find 5 and if we are looking for a target as 10 so we have root, root value as 5 then we work then we have to search for 5 so we will keep in the map as 5 uh, the key and and the reason that we will search for its left and right node uh, right left subtree and right subtree if we find a uh, 5 then we will look at the map whether suppose in the left subtree the root is 6 Sorry. So yeah, six. I have an example for you. Go for it. Yep. So let's say we want to find uh, uh, 20 in this case, right? There are two answers: 14 and 6, and uh, 13 and 7. Correct? Which line number? Here. No, not line number. Oh, the image sorry. on the screen. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Where are you? on the conference uh, join as you skills the conference the screen the video share okay uh, so i don't s- it's free conference call that that's where you have joined to the conference oh you just you're not on the computer is it at all oh, you're not join you didn't join as you just dialed on the phone i guess i just dialed on the phone yeah since i'll go i'll go to it Uh-oh. just juggling the windows and lots yeah, and lots sorry. of real estate it's okay i can i can paste the uh, i can paste the link in the in the slack so that way you can you guys well can, i can I, i can find it it's just no it's it's just a link so of, of an image so go for it i'll paste it in the slack that's probably easier go for it i, I didn't know that i had to keep all three up is all yeah. <laughs> So I was just okay. trying to yeah. I was I was just trying to save screen real estate, you know? Uh-huh. And some Cause... electrons. All right, so yeah, so, so go ahead, Arthik. So we have 8 as a the root in order traversal for this. That would okay. help, help me out to solve this scenario so, so usually in order so traversal would, how you would do in order traversal and then essentially yeah. so you'll find one and then you will try to do a binary search lookup of the complement yeah, lookup. So Yeah, the lookup I have, have I will I will add as we are searching for 14, I will add 13 in the lookup. Okay, so uh, we are we are trying to look for 20, so you'll be looking for 19 right now. So yes. tell me, uh, is there anyone here who does not understand this algorithm? This algorithm works. It's a it's a neat yeah. algorithm. Is there anyone here who actually has a problem with this approach? Yeah, I I just don't understand. Like, can can you summarize? Okay. Sure. So the idea is that uh, if you do an in order traversal, right, you will get you will get the node 1 3 4 6 7 8 10 13 10, 13 and 14 is essentially you will be browsing the nodes in sorted order does that make sense this is a binary search tree in order traversal will give you sorted order right mhm yeah. any questions ps no okay so now you take the first element which is 1 okay you are trying to find two numbers that add up to 20 right So what are you looking for is so you're looking for the presence of 19 in this binary search tree. Do you know how to do that? Do you traverse the binary search tree or is there You will again tree? traverse the binary search tree but you're looking for 19 this time. So it's not a traversal anymore but it's more like a find operation. So you will compare 8 with 19 is it greater or less? 19 is bigger. So then you go to 10 is uh, 10 bigger than 19 like nope 19 is bigger then you go to 14 is 14 bigger than 19 like nope 19 is bigger so now you try to go to the right of 14 you will not find it so you will say sorry i didn't find 19 negative which means 1 19 is not an answer then you 
then your in order traversal second step will take place which is 3 uh-huh. now with 3 you are trying to locate 17 yeah again you do a binary search look up in a binary search tree which is you check if 17 is greater than 8 yes 10. is 17 greater than 10 yes is 17 greater than 14 yes 13. there is nothing to the right so not found yeah. great now next is 6 14 is 14 greater than 8 mm. yes is 14 greater than 10 yes and then you find 14 so you're done so you print the answer 6 and 14 and you continue so on and so forth that actually don't co- you just said return a value so if you if you yeah. found if you found a match you're done if you return one if, if the goal is to return one then that's how you do it if the goal is to return all combinations you may continue but fair enough let's say you're, yeah. you're in this case you're done right so you stop good point so what is the time complexity of this operation it's n square n log n why is, why is it n square ps I, i'm just thinking for each the n that you are the worst case complexity is n square right just for each n that you travel the entire um almost the entire you're not, you're not traversing the entire tree so yeah. the first one is n because you have to go through every node in the tree that is the first one i mean you at least you have to go through the left half of the of the tree at least one half of the thing or maybe we have to go through so both. worst I mean, case is yes, yes, one half yeah one half yes this n by 2 so you still have to go through everything because what if i actually ask for 27 right the answer is in both sides you have to go through the whole tree anyways once but then when you're trying to locate the complement so what is the complexity of locating a complement that no, the order of h that is order of h the height right because at most you will only see as many nodes required because every step of the way you are stepping down the ladder once right you are going to the next level every time which means at most you will have to perform h computations where h is the height of the binary tree and what is the height of the binary tree it's log n if it's balanced no okay. what was that i just missed uh the complexity no, of complexity? search operation in a binary search tree is log of the depth is log n which is essentially yep. because it's it's the yep. same as the depth of the binary tree and if it's a balanced binary tree then it is log n right log so n. in this case you are looking at an n log n operation is there anyone here who can actually give me a better algorithm no you need to use map if you can use additional I storage no no additional storage no additional storage permit okay now we can uh, do a in order in order and the reverse in order traversal so that we can uh, uh, start it's like a sorted array starting from both ends if you do an in order traversal and, and you do a reverse order. in order traversal you are actually doing it in uh, so you are doing it in iterative way you're not doing it in a So yeah, you will okay. actually be using log d space i mean log um, n space because you log are using space, the yes. you will have, you'll be storing the depth right yes yes so we can't do that so you want without space yep no space so for each node suppose if i look it's a reach so, eight so i have to search for its complement in the whole tree again so so it's a uh, So for eight, if the target value is fifteen, at eight I will search for seven in the whole tree. Similarly, for each Correct. node I will search for the whole tree, which is going to be n log n operation, right? Yeah. So we did n log n without using any extra space. We uh, we were able to come up with the n log n solution. That makes right. sense. Yeah. The, the, can we do better than order, that? What does he mean by reverse in order? Are you, is he saying like traversing ascending order and descending order? Yes. He was trying to say uh, in order traversal. I don't know how to do in order reverse in order traversal, but uh, uh, in order traversal is you keep going left all the way, and then uh, once you're done with the left, then you print the current node, and then you go right, and you process left, process current, and then process right. That's the in order traversal way. Okay. Uh, uh, let me check, Pramod, if you're muted. I don't think you are. I didn't mute you, but let me check. Go on. Go ahead. based on what uh, uh, i think ps suggested just now i mean once we have an in order traversal i mean we just uh, start looking from uh, the first element and uh, check the last element and take the sum and if we realize that the 
sum is kind of still lesser than the 20 say in this case uh, it will be 1 and it will be 14 1 plus 14 is 15 it is still lesser than uh, 20 so instead of 1 we go to 3 so ideally i'm saying that you um, kind of put the in order traversed uh, elements out into an array or something and start looking at every element of that array um, starting with the first element and comparing it uh, with the total with the last element and you know you kind of uh, increment if uh, increment um, as in go further if it is uh, it's i mean if it's 15 it's less than 20 so you, you know that you have to go to 3 now so 3 plus 14 is still less than 20 so go to 4 no no hang on hang on one step at a time right so how did you go to 4 from 3 what what I um, I'm just what I'm trying to okay um, I, I'm just thinking uh, that we convert this thing like into an array of contiguous basically we get a sorted list of elements in this array so it'll be one three four uh, no, six. So, no, you don't have extra space you don't you can't store the entire thing I mean I, I'll give you log these the log of uh, n space for you to do one in order traversal, right? You have to do one kind of traversal. So I can, I can understand I give you that, that much space. That's all the extra space you have. You don't have other space. Okay, okay. Okay, so you will but, you, but you're, on to, you're on to something. So here is, here is, how about this as an idea? Do you remember uh, how we did the, the in, if you're given a sorted array, how do you find uh, two elements that add up? You have one pointer to the left and one pointer to the right and you just keep, uh, moving either the left pointer or the right pointer depending on whether you are over or under the target. Do you guys remember the algorithm? Yes. Okay. So what if we actually use a similar technique? You know, uh, what, is, how do you, uh, what is the time complexity required to go find the largest element in an array in a binary search tree? That's order of the level of the tree, right? Correct. It's O of uh, uh, log n again, right? So that's fine. You're done. What is the order of complexity to get to the smallest element in a binary search tree? Also, also log n. Correct. Yeah. Now you're there. Now you look at these two elements, and now it's the same logic as before, uh, uh, except that now what you're trying to we are gonna, we are making an assumption from over that this is a balanced binary search tree. Okay. So now uh, when we look at this this particular approach. We say that now let's, there are only two pos three possibilities. Either you found an answer, which is awesome, or the target that you have is either less or the target that you have is more. Okay? In a binary search tree, how would you find the next greatest number to a given number? Let's right. assume you have parent right. pointer available. Next, right small, you just have to go to the right side if you have. Right, right, right so the parent and find the max. No, no, next child of a current node is actually, next greater number to the current node is not, not parent. That's the parent's right child. the parent and find its max, uh, its successor. So, no, no, the, the, the thing is that if you are the right child then you are the max. of your parent, then you have to look at your your right child and look at the left child of your right child. Left, you have to look at the smallest element on your right child. Okay. Right, if you look at, say I'm current node is 3. Okay? okay, what is the next node? The next node is 4. How did I get to 4? It is actually the Success. smallest element in my right tree. Right subtree. Smallest element which is greater than the current uh, wait, node. Wait, wait. You, you're already smallest element. The... You're looking what for. Is a, an, I'm sorry. I'm missing the point. I think. I'm sorry. Uh, are you looking? You, you are on the largest node. That is 13. I'm that on, is 14, right? No, I'm on three right now. And Say, you're finding what? Uh, I want to find the next greatest number than three in the current node. Can I? How okay. do I do that? In the current okay. uh, entire tree. How do I find the next greatest node? There are only a few conditions. One condition is that if I have a right child, then my right child's smallest node will be the next node higher than me, correct? Mm -hmm. Isn't that mm -hmm. the in-order traversal itself? It, it is right? in-order traversal, but unfortunately, we don't have the context of in-order traversal at this point of time, right? Because all I have is the node, right? If I, if I give you a given node in a binary search tree, to find the next highest node is what my question is for you. 
the way you do it is that if I have a right child, then the smallest element in the right tree is the answer. Right. If I don't have a right child, then my parent is the answer. Correct. Only if my parent is greater than me. Yeah, parents always greater than you, right? Not necessarily. Not if I if I'm ten, if I'm ten, right, the parent is eight. Uh, yeah. Okay. So. Like the next number to 10 is actually 13. That is because of my right child, that is the, that is the bottom element. If I am 14, I don't have a right child and my parent is less than me. So there is no number greater than me. Correct? Yeah. Uh -huh. Using similar logic, you can find the next smallest number also. Given 14, you can find the next smallest number using the same logic. Okay. What is, the, what is the complexity of finding the, the next largest number or the next smallest number? As in log n. Is it always log n? No, it's less the, it can be less than log n. The, the yeah, it is that the particular level, um, the height from that level. Mm -hmm. so, so it is actually not log n, but uh, amortized cost actually is O of 1 in this case. For large trees, the cost of finding the next, lar next largest or the next smallest element is actually O of 1 uh, across a large tree. I mean, it will be somewhere between O of 1 and uh, O of log n, and uh, that's what it will be. So, Igor, we are actually on, uh, uh, on the warm-up question number 2. We are actually going pretty slow. Hey, Vivek, uh, isn't the name for this called successor or predecessor? Like sure, that works. Release. That's a that's a better name. So let's let's use that. The so successor successor predecessor has a little bit of a different connotation. That's why I was looking at the next greater number and okay. the, like a number greater than the current one, next higher number and next smaller number or previous smaller number. So once we know that, essentially it's you use use the same algorithm that we used in the array, right? It's the same algorithm. If the A plus B is actually uh, better then we, uh, if, if a plus b is more than the value, then you keep decrementing b. And if uh, a plus b is less than a target, then you keep incrementing a. You know, now you have a mechanism to do uh, next or successor of the current node and predecessor of the current node. Like the in-order successor and in-order predecessor, you know how to get there. Uh, using uh, between somewhat of a log n time, but it's not really log n. It's amortized is actually O of 1. So this essentially reduces to a O of n algorithm kind of like a weird way of doing it, but uh, it will be fun to see if you can actually implement it. Okay. Any questions? Yeah, I've seen this question, but I couldn't understood this logic earlier. Just last week only I've seen this question. It's, it's a very common question, but uh, but how you do it, like very common answer is to do a, a, a in order traversal and then do a lookup. That is like a very common answer. But this mm -hmm. whole concept of actually finding the successor and predecessor Concept is not not very common, so just wanted to lay, leave you guys with that, and see if you can code it up. And a fun thing will be to code it up because that coding that is going to be super hard. In an interview, they may actually get you to a point of uh, solving that question, but then uh, uh, then then you're then you you are left with now you need to code it, which will be a, a beast of its own, right? Mm -hmm. Excellent. So now uh, let's move on to the, the Q3, which is still warm up. Uh, we're still warming up, getting there. All right. So um, given a post for a traversal of a binary search tree, can you reconstruct it? So, so, so back, if right? I give you, say again? You come from the reverse. You come from the end. The last node is the no. root, right? So if I give you the post for a traversal of any tree, can you construct the tree? Uh-huh. No. No. No, 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 no. no. We need two in order with the post order or in order so, with the tree order. Yeah. Something like that. You then always need you always need two traversals. You need a, you need the in yeah. order with the pre order or in order with the post order. Order, with the post order. Just yes. giving you pre and post is also not enough. Yes. But the the trick here is that what did it what, what am I telling you about the tree? So it's a binary search tree, so uh, in order will be the elements arranged in increasing order. Absolutely, so Harmeet. So all you have to do is sort this array and you get 
the in order traversal and you, you have the in order and you have the post order now you can solve the trick correct yeah all right so you have to store the root so or right. so now we have so that so that, did people understand that the trick why do you have to sort this because of the binary yes. tree and where the it's easier to um in the parse and it's easier to go with just left and right Okay. Actually, it's easier okay. in Java. You need not. I just have a question. Like, do you, do you really need to store? Uh, don't, don't you need to store the root of the root of the tree or sorting is enough? No, no. First, you sort. That that gives you the in order thing, right? Why do you need the in order? Is actually very simple. So this is the in order sorting of of this. Um, Okay, I have just done that. So now, wh what do we know uh, about the post order traversal? What is the last element of a post order traversal? Root. That's the root. Root. Are you sure? Anybody disagrees? Yes. Yeah. No. So this is the root, right? Yeah. Okay. So if that is the root, based on in order, what do you know? In order, the root is always in the middle. Or close so this is the left tree and this is the right tree. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And what what else do we what else do we know that we know that uh, 31 belongs to the right tree and 15 belongs to the left tree. So is that is yeah. that it? Correct. Yeah. So essentially. This is the post order for the right tree, and this is the in order for the right tree, and this is the in order uh, post order for the left tree, and in order for the left tree. So now that you have this information, you can go ahead and uh, and and construct recursively the same thing, right? So what is the node on the left? What's the first node on the left? What's the child node of twenty-five? Fifteen. <laughs> It's 15, and what is the right node? 24. No. I should I should get it up 25. Sorry. 31. No, 50. 50. Why are you thinking? Okay. It's the last element in the post order, right? Yeah. Right. And that's it. And you can you can keep recursively doing this. So that way you know. Uh, so the in order will tell you because this is 50, right? So 50 is this middle. So now you can actually look at everything to this side is one tree and everything on this side is like uh, it should be on the left half and the, it should be on the left of 50 and that should be on the right of 50 and you're good to go. How did okay? you divide the post order? It's the same same thing using the same values, right? I just missed it. So, because so see 30, 31, 35 and 44 have to be uh, in this side. So you just take the first first three elements and the number of elements. But my own question. Okay. Number of elements, right? The number of elements in the in the post order of the left tree should be the same as the number of elements in the post order of the in order of the left tree. Yep, yep. Yeah, got it. Based on the number of elements, you can just do that. I mean, I did it based on the specific actual value, but you can do it based on the number of elements. Okay, it, it works the same way. Make sense? It's a very subtle trick. So uh, two lessons here. Number lesson number one is uh, that you cannot, uh, you need in order traversal along with either pre or post order for you to reconstruct the tree. Just giving in order is not adequate. Okay. Uh, just giving post order is not adequate. Just giving pre order is not adequate. In or uh, pre order and post order is also not adequate. There are issues with that too. Okay. Uh, and in Java, it's actually easy. So you just create a tree set and just or tree map and add all the values. You need not to sort and really automatically just <laughs> sure, sure. Tree map actually so will will provide the, the values in a yeah. sorted order anyways, right? Sorted order. Yeah. It is the same thing. It's like if it's a, if you use it or any other sorted data structure will actually give you the same information. Tree map does the same thing. 
All right, so let's jump into the actual workout question. We may be able to get to maybe one or two of these questions today, but uh, let's see if we can do more than that. Okay, so uh, the first one is, uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to skip on to the last one and uh, not do the path sum, and let's do the Huffman encoding. Who knows what Huffman encoding is? What is Huffman encoding? Any takers? Silence. Thank you, Visa. Okay. So Huffman we will encoding is the... We will be completing today. That's, why. <laughs> That's exactly why I did this. So let's, let's get to this. Huffman encoding is actually it's a fun little thing. So here's, what, here's what I have. Vivek, I can try it out. Sorry, I was on mute. Yeah, go ahead, Ben. Go ahead, go ahead. Um, so, from what I remember back in college, uh, half minute code, so they say you have a set of numbers and uh, what their frequency of use would be. So, uh -huh. maybe value one has a frequent use of five, or value two has a frequency of ten, three, frequent use of 15, blah, 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 so on, so on, so on, right? So basically you're creating a, a tree and you would sort this list by the frequency of, of the two, I think of the two lowest elements. That's from what mm -hmm. I remember. Uh -huh. and, then I think from, and I think from there, those two elements are removed from that list. And and this is Hoffman tree, by the way. So by so the new parent node would be would have um, so what did I say one five two ten three fifteen uh, oh yeah, actually have values right here. So yep, I just gave you an example, so it's easier for you to go for it. All right. So you're removing the two lowest elements in the in this uh, uh, example. So I think it's. Uh, so, so let, 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 let me let me let me take a, a little bit of a, a stab at this. So here's like, let's say you're given a data set, okay, with, which contains like only the letters from A through H. How many letters are there? That's eight letters in all. Correct. Right. So I should be able to say uh, A equals 0, 0, 0 in terms of bits and uh, B equals 0, 0, 1, like binary essentially, and H equals 1, 1, 1. So I can encode each bit, each letter in a 3-bit number, and what I get is uh, uh, that if I count the number of characters here, the total is 2,459 in terms of occurrence, like 1,000 A's, 800 B's, three C's and five D's and so on and so forth. And, uh, and that actually translates to multiplied by three, which is equals 7,377 bits. So if you were to use the same number of bits for every letter, you will actually get, you will, be, uh, you will end up using 7,377 bits. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So far it makes sense, right? So let us, let's actually do something funky, right? Let's say that uh, I say A is zero, just one bit. If there's zero, then it has to be A. It doesn't have to be anything else. And uh, I use four bits to encode everything else. Like I know I start with a one, and then I, I use four bits to encode everything else. And so on, right? I can do that. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. the base ASCII value you are right? When you will start with one one bit and keep adding. So A is one. A is zero. If I get a zero, that's A. Okay. 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 So if I if I get so in, in, if I were if I had a a, a symbol called A B, then uh, good question from one, one second. So if I have a symbol called A B, then in my old language I would have said zero 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 and I would have done 0, 0, 001. That's what I would have done, right? That's yes. A and B, correct? Now, mm -hmm. what I'll do is, I will actually say it's 0, that means it's A, and 
next will be 1000. So the reason why it's 4 bits and not 3 bits is because none of them actually start with a 1, uh, with a 0. Right? Every other letter like B, C, D, E, F, G and H will start with a 1. That's why, that's how, this, that's why this works. Does that make sense? Hey, Vivek, one quick question. Go on, so go on. Num the numbers next to the letters are actually frequencies, right? Correct, correct. The 1803, 520, 500 are frequency of occurrence. And the reason you put zero for A is because that's the most occurring. That is correct. That is correct. I'm tr I'm trying to say that instead of wasting three let three digits or three symbols to represent A, I'm just going to encode A with only one symbol. Okay. So if I do that, guess what's going to happen? The number of, I, I can actually store, I can actually represent this entire data set in only 6,66836. How did I come to that? So it is this. Uh, 1 into 1,000 plus 4 into 800. It's 1 into 1,000 plus 4 into 800 plus 4 into 3 mm -hmm. plus 4 into everything else and that actually totals up to 6,836, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And, and it's better. It actually, you, instead of using 7,377 bits to store this, now you have actually managed to store it in less number of bits. So far with me? Okay. Yep. Now, but there is a smarter way to do it. You can actually do it even better than this. There, there is a way to do in less space than that. And how would you actually do that? And that was a technique that actually Ben was talking about, where what you do is that you, uh, you essentially take the lowest, what are the smallest two that you have in this case? C, C, and, C and D, right? So what you do is you put a zero for C and a one for D, and then what you're saying is, you, let's keep the others, let's take C and D, put them elsewhere, and I'm actually going to say CD equals 8. Okay? I just combined the C and D weight into 1. Now, what are the smallest two? CD and E. The group of CD and E, right? So I'm actually going to put uh, uh, 0 for the smaller one and 1 for the larger one. And I'm going to take that, move it here. And I'm going to put here CDE equals 28. Okay. Now what do you have? C G and G. Okay. So I'm going to put go here, put this as 0, put this as 1, and then go put it here. CDEG. Uh, just follow along with the logic for now, and uh, uh, we'll, uh, we'll see how it works, actually. It's 59, right? Um, now what is the smallest two? Okay, so hang on. Uh, what was the question again? Sorry, go ahead. We're going to help out building it as a tree so we can keep track of. What's... Yeah, we will. Let's do the additions first and then essentially we'll do. I, I don't have a visual representation here, so I'm, I'm just doing it linearly, but then we'll just construct a tree with this after this immediately. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, go on. What's the next two? C, D, E, G, so. and H. Right, so that's that. So this is a smaller one. I put a zero. Bigger one, I put a one. I cut that. I put it here. So it's C D E G H equals one fifty nine. Okay. So what I get? Actually, this is like. In this case, it's dumb because you're just adding one every time. Unfortunately, right? There are scenarios where it will not work this way, but you could have other small like once if that be the case. So here everything is, is linearly working that way. So what happens is in this case it's F and uh, C, D, E, G, H. So this is a zero, this is a one, and the total is C, D, E, G, H, F. That's actually one, uh, 659. Okay, and then uh, this is a zero, this is a one, Okay, and uh, so C D E uh, C D E G H yes. F B equals one four five nine. One four five nine, 
and and that's that's what we have right so now what we do is we assign the smaller number 0 and we assign the larger number 1 okay so essentially what this means is uh, everything that is in cd this thing will start with a 1 okay so what does that mean that means that this will be a 1 0 and this will be a 1 1 does that make sense I, I i didn't follow that okay sure let's go back and do this right so all we are saying is that uh, if you find a zero, if you if if you're just like you know you just have a stream of uh, zeros and ones, okay. If the first letter you find is a zero, then that represents an A. Got it? Okay. So far with me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, if the first letter you find is a one, then that means it's one of this group. It could either be a C or a D or a E or a G or a F or a B. I don't know which one. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what this means, and and that is is this group that we talked about. So if you if you think of this as a tree, right, the way this actually works is you would actually have zero, which is represented by A, and one, which is represented by C, D, E, F, G, H, whatever the F, B, right? It'll be this one, and this will have two children. Right, the zeroth child of this, the, the first child of this is B, that's this one, and the left child of it is zero, which is represented by the C all the way through F. So far with me? Yeah. Okay, and the left child of this is actually the zero which is represented by C all the way through H, and the right child of this is represented by a 1, which is F only. So what so far what it means is if you get a 0, that's A. If you get a 1, 1, that's a B. If you get a 1, 0, 1, that's a F. If you get a 1, 0, 0, followed by something, that could either be a C, through H, it could be anything from C through H. We don't know that yet. We'll figure out what that looks like. Okay. Mm -hmm. So far, makes sense. Yes. So, what is to the left of uh, C? It's pretty easy. So we are done with this. We are done with this. We are done with this. So, line so now three. we are looking at. We are also done with F. Now we are looking at H, right? So H is here. That's it. And that is a one. And uh, the zero represents C D E G. Okay. So if it if this were to be a one, then that's a H. One zero zero something uh, zero X X X X would actually be C D E or G. Okay. So again, it's the same thing. So this is a tree that Ben was asking me to create, and and you could create the tree from bottom up as well, the same way. So that's this. These two are gone. So now G is here. So G one is G, and zero is C D E. So if it's one three zeros and a one, that's G one three zero four zeros and something is CDE. This is a little ugly because of how the data was, but uh, usually it actually has a slightly more balanced tree. Okay, so this is P and 0 is CD and then this is C and this is D. Okay? Let's look at this. Uh, so, what did we get? If it's a zero one, then that's a E. If it's this, then it's a D. And if it's this, then it's a C. So far with me. I don't know if you're able to get to this quickly enough. Were you able to get to this? Yes. Okay, so A has how many bits? One. One, one bit. B, two bits. Yeah. F is three bits. 
G is four bits. Okay, H is uh, no H is four bits. G is five bits. E is six bits. And C and D both are seven bits each. Correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. With this distribution, guess what we get? Total number of total number of bits required. It's four thousand eight hundred thirty-one. That was a distribution, A1000, B800, C3, D5, E20, F5. I just did the multiplication uh, in Excel, and, uh, and I just looked at it. It's 4831. So that's how, this is how half-point encoding works. Now, how, does, how do you actually translate this to code? Before I, before I ask the coding question, right? So, uh, is there anyone who does not understand how this works? Uh, not exactly, but it actually uses a lot of concepts. So, the question was, will, this, will somebody ask you to code this in an interview? Uh, maybe, maybe not. But the whole point is that uh, these, these things are, uh, they actually use the same concepts that will be used for, for code. So, now you have now you know the logic, right? Now how do you translate this logic to code will be the question. So but before I get there, is there anyone here who does not understand the logic? I didn't understand how you arrived at the four eight three one result. Oh that is actually how many how many we said right? So A is two one bit, B is two bits, F is three bits. H is four bits, G is five bits, E is six bits, C and D are seven bits each. If you multiply all these values and add it up, that will be four three four eight three one. Does that make sense? Okay. A any questions before we before we move on to this subsequent part? In, in a normal English language dictionary, you don't need, I mean, there, there will always be a, a frequency distribution, and you can always use that to figure out how to code it, right? So you, so you can there are two use steps involved in it here, right? So one is to, uh, there are two steps here, right? So one step is to uh, get the minimum two and add, and make it one particular group and within the same uh, set of numbers, I can you find two other minimums, something like that. Right? There is one particular step, right? That we can do using the mean heap. So it's each step, I mean, we will uh, add all the values into the, all the occurrences uh, into the mean heap and we, so we will pop two values from that. So which will be two uh, many, uh, the least two numbers, and we add that and push to mean it again, and we will uh, get two numbers out of it. So recursively we do it till the mean app is mean is empty, by which we will get the first step of uh, zero one zero one. That's what we found, right? So Does this one example is like. This one example that we had is an awful example with uh, with the counts being so polarizing that you got like a very one-sided tree. Usually, you would actually get a slightly more balanced tree. Okay, so that's one thing. So you won't have like a scenario where it's always like it's two bits, one bit, two bit, three bit, four bit. That scenario does not happen. It's usually more balanced. So that's first one to go. But uh, let's let's go with the example of this. What you have. So what you're saying is I'll. I'll take the distribution of the characters, and I'll create a min heap with this. And what will be at the top of my, what will be at the tip of my min heap? Mm, the lowest one that is three. C, C in this case. C, yes. C three will be in the min heap, and I'll take it out. Then I'll take the next element from the min heap. That will be D, 
which is d5 okay. okay then what do i do you add those two that is 8 8 cd okay. and then to 8 cd push to the uh minute just doing that will not help you need to do one more step and you have, you have to assign them as like zero one. Yeah. So essentially, what you do is you create like a a mini tree, like so, and then you say that this is C zero C, and this is one D. So is this like a and binary search tree? It's a binary tree. It's not a search tree. It is not a search tree. I mean, binary search tree has very specific connotations. So this is just a binary tree. This is a bi this is a binary tree with the root as CD, which has a value of eight. Mm. Okay, this is gives a weight of eight. Okay, and uh, the bit bit flag is unknown. In this case, the bit is zero, the weight is three. You can just keep it that way. Bit is one and weight is uh, is five right and that's it so you put this you put this back inside the min heap and where will it land so it will land at the top of the heap right because unfortunately eight is the smallest value yeah 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 i mean it's it's so happened in that case right so let's actually take a slightly different example and see if that uh, so a is 10 b is 8 c is 6 d is uh, let's say seven let's take this example okay that's it only four bits only four letters now what do you do so you pull the lowest one that is c6 pull c okay so you pull cd again in this case and you make it 13 and then you have the 14. Oh, 13. zero c and one d right one d. yes okay now what do you do put this back in the stack in the in the in, in main heap mm, what do you get you will pull b 13 and, and you you pull a and b now you get 10 plus 8 which is 18 and then you say 0 is a a 0 is b and 1 is a right mm -hmm. yes. okay and what next then you put okay. A B back for the heap. Then you put now you 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 have a tree where you construct. Uh, so you you are creating a tree, where essentially what you're doing is you are creating a tree with uh, uh, A B on one side, uh, uh, C D on this side, and A B on this side, right? Zero C D and one A B. So this is again a terrible example, where it's a it's a it, it's a balanced tree, completely balanced tree, which means A B C D all will have only two bits. Given that the frequencies are very close, there is really no way for you to optimize this. Okay. That makes sense? Yeah. So I'm just so, like, this is a question, like, um, I'm curious question. Like, uh, is there a way that there is um, ambigu ambiguity in, in interpreting, in converting the binary to the original letters uh, I just the, the previous example there is no ambiguity given zeros and ones you can figure out which is a and b because the the way the zeros and ones are represented mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I'm just thinking is there a possibility that there is an ambiguity in, in interpreting converting from binary to the original like characters you tell me do you think it's uh, from a tree perspective, it has its own path, so it shouldn't. Um, it it will have. It won't have ambiguity in terms of value. But let's say I'm. I, 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 my question is more like let's say that A is uh, there is there is another character which is encoded as one one zero. Will that be possible? Uh, imagine the tree. How will it look in the tree? Um. It won't work, right? Because the only way you actually will encode a character as 110 is when that character is in the leaf node. 
Yeah. The zero one one zero zero will be in the leaf node, right? So which means that no other character will actually start with one one zero. So no, here in this example that you see, for example, A is zero, and then B is one one. The, the previous example that you quoted Correct. here in the mm -hmm. tree. Um, here, uh, when you look at the tree here, one one zero that is that can be a position, which is one one zero. No, one one zero will actually be a child of B. That's not possible. Child of B, yeah. That's not possible. Not possible. Yeah, because yeah, the only way that can happen is yeah. this would be a composite character, right? It will be like uh, like X B or something like that. Only then that will that will be possible. In which case, one one zero will be X and one 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 will be B, right? Or something like that. Okay. The only way it will have children is when it is actually a compound character. Right. So it can never be ambiguous. That is correct. One of the, that's one of the tricks of Huffman tree is that uh, each leaf node is the one that actually the the path from the root node to the leaf node is what uniquely defines the 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 path, and that path cannot. There's no other way. Like the prefixes, you will not have any other. Like you will not have two characters in such a way that uh, that one character is like a prefix of another character is not possible at all. Yeah, because it's ambiguous. And, and that will create the ambiguity, which is this is this actually completely excludes the ambiguity. And the fun thing, of course, is that the length of the number of bits that are used to represent the character is actually uh, asymmetrically high for low frequency characters and asymmetrically low for the high frequency characters. Yeah. And so by definition, you will be saving space because you're actually using a number of characters to encode so uh, the high frequency uh, characters and more number of characters to encode the low frequency characters. On top of mm. this pairing, you also will have to store what is called the Huffman table, which tells you like A is 0, B is 11, and C, F is 1, 0, right? That you have to store, obviously. Some, some way you have to do the lookup table first. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. So yeah. what if uh, all the, when most of them have the same count, that's what we just did, right? If, unfortunately, if they're close enough, then the Huffman tree will actually be a, a balanced binary, tree. Balanced tree. Balanced okay. binary tree, which means that everything will have the same number of characters. Okay. Okay. Which means that you okay. will not be optimizing anything. Yeah. Okay. I got it. Okay. It'll end up being like, and, and this can work on any, this will work on any number of bits, essentially. Mm-hmm. And in, in addition to that, this also will work differently when you don't have, so here you had eight characters, right? I gave you a scenario with eight characters. It actually works pretty neatly with six characters, with five characters, with like 117 characters. Because yeah. you're building a tree, that's it, right? So it doesn't have to be, there's no balanced or unbalanced concept here. It's sort yeah. of weight balanced, okay? Uh, this is Suresh, I have a question here. Yeah, Suresh, go ahead. Yes, if the frequencies are same, for example, A, B, C, D, right? Uh, C and D are both are six. Then how can we assign zeros and ones? Uh, we just uh, there is. I'm, I'm just picking the lowest one as zero, and if they're equal, then it doesn't matter. Pick one of them. You you will have a the solution doesn't change anything. Oh, then we still we will get the distinct uh, one from zeros for C and D from the root. For example, if you start a path from the root. Yeah, so so in that case, uh, C would be 0, 0, and D would be 0, 1, zero. or oh. you could, or it could be the opposite, where you could oh. say D equals 0, 0, or C equals 0, 1. Either way, it doesn't matter. Oh, okay. You just pick one. It's just one exactly. encoding, right? You put it in the table, and you say that 0, 0 means C, then 0, 0 means C. That's it. That's right. That's right. Okay, yeah. thank you. Excellent. Any, anything else? Any other questions on Huffman? I know I kind of twisted this around a little to to get this going first. All right. So uh, what we will do most likely is uh, we may end up uh, uh, we may end up doing the 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 moderate questions. The other ones, the easy moderate, the path some question uh, in either in next class or we'll figure out how to do that. Uh, alternately, uh, we'll just like leave it as an exercise and I'll pick a new theme next week. I'll figure it out which way it works. But um, uh, just a couple of things to, to go with is, uh, so that's all I had for today's session. 
I'm going to uh, turn off the recording and then I have like a, a couple of minor announcements of sorts just to, to tell folks how to start using the Slack channel a lot more. So thank you all for showing up and uh, we'll see you soon.